In this video, we'll take a look at the molecular geometry for KRF2. This is krypton difluoride. We'll also look at the polarity for KRF2. So we start with a valid Lewis structure. This is the valid Lewis structure for KRF2. We have these two fluorine atoms bonded covalently to the krypton, but we also have one, two, three lone pairs around that central krypton atom. So krypton can have an expanded octet. It can have more than eight valence electrons. So this is our Lewis structure. If we look at the molecular geometry, we can use the AXE notation to figure out our geometry. A, that's the central atom. That's the krypton. X, that's the number of atoms bonded. We have one, two fluorine atoms. And then E, that's the number of lone pairs. One, two, three. So we have three lone pairs there. So you either memorize that AX 2E3 is a linear molecular geometry with a bond angle of 180, or if you're allowed, you look it up on a table for molecular geometries based on this AXE notation. Let's visualize this for a second and then talk about whether KRF2 is a polar or nonpolar molecule. So the krypton, that's the central atom. That'll be the purple here. Let's add two fluorine atoms, one, two, and they'd spread out to be as far away as they can be from each other. But then we have those three lone pairs, so let's add them. If we add one, it forces things down. Add another, even further. But if we add that third, whoops, that third lone pair, watch what happens. It forces it into this linear molecular geometry. We look at the bond angles, it'd be 180 degrees. It's a linear molecular geometry. So the molecular geometry for KRF2 is linear with a bond angle of 180. If we wanted to talk about electron geometry, where we take into account all these lone pairs and the atoms, we end up with what's called a trigonal bipyramidal electron geometry. So if we take into account the electron geometry, we have this trigonal bipyramidal. But for the molecular geometry, if we kind of hide the lone pairs, we end up with a linear molecular geometry for KRF2. Back to our Lewis structure. If we want to look at the polarity, what we need to note is that there is a difference between this Kr, the krypton, and these two fluorine atoms. It's a difference of 0.98. So it would be a polar molecule, except because it's linear, these are on opposite sides. And since they're on opposite sides, they're going to cancel out. Their dipole will cancel out. So KRF2 turns out to be a nonpolar molecule because it's symmetrical. It has this symmetry. This is Dr. B with the molecular geometry and polarity for KRF2, krypton difluoride. Thanks for watching.